Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at Morphe's with this FN Model 30, Model 30. This is an early Belgian FN BAR. Now, FN would go on to make a bunch of BARs, but this is sort of the beginning of their commercial export production. So the BAR, of course, begins in the United States. It's designed by John Browning, and it's intended for the US military in World War I. Colt is, of course, one of the first companies to make it, because of Colt's long-standing relationship with John Browning. A couple other companies are brought on board as well, just to increase manufacturing capacity. But uh, FN in Belgium has also has a long-standing relationship with John Browning. They started producing his first semi-auto pistols, and once we get into the interwar period, when FN has sort of gotten back on their feet after German occupation of Belgium, they're very interested in continuing to promote and manufacture other John Browning designs, including the BAR. So Poland comes into the picture, Poland decides to adopt the BAR, and their initial production is actually done by FN. So FN gets its hands on plans for the BAR from Colt, and they retool, they redesign those plans from inch to metric measurements, which doesn't seem like a big deal, but it really is a significant process. It's not so much converting a basic measurement, it's converting all the tolerances um, and designing fixturing that's all in metric measurements. Anyway, they do all that. Uh, they get Belgi or they get uh, Polish production up and running, and at that point, FN is really interested in marketing this gun themselves. They don't want to just help supply Poland. They want to make a version with what they think are all the best features and sell it to, well, everybody that they can. Now the guy in charge of this at this point, uh, starting in 1930, the director of the military arms division at FN is a guy named Dieudonné Saif. Uh, he was essentially John Browning's engineering heir. He was Browning's assistant. Um, his, he was actually the prime force behind the FN high power pistol that started as a Browning design, but very quickly moved to Saif, who did all the completing work on it. Um, that's his legacy. He was also heavily involved with the FN-49 and the FN Foul. So he's head of FN's military arms division. He's taking on a John Browning gun, and well, they're gonna make something of it. So uh, FN gets a license from Colt in 1930 to sell BARs in essentially FN's sales territory. So. With Browning designs, most of them pistols, or you could also look at the Auto 5 shotguns, uh, Colt has the license to sell them in the Americas, FN has the license to sell them in Europe, as a simplification, but that's basically how it works. And they extend that agreement to the BAR. So uh, FN is going to pay Colt $15 per gun, which is actually quite a lot of money for a patent or for a license at this time, but the BAR is a complicated, expensive gun to sell. So FN goes through, they take, essentially they copy the, the Colt 1925 commercial gun, the R75, but then they add a few little tweaks. They go with a sight very much copied or inspired by the Polish uh, Model 1928 BAR. They add their own magazine release, and voila, they create the Model 30. Starting here on the side, we have our manufacturer's marks, FN, uh, Fabrique Nationale in Herstal, Belgium. This gun is serial number 7810. We have a couple of FN proof marks there. We also have a matching serial number on the barrel, which is, that'll be important in a moment. Matching serial number on the trigger assembly as well. Here on the top of the receiver we have some more useful stuff. We have a Crown L that tells us that this gun was produced during the reign of Leopold III of Belgium. Uh, he ascended to office in 1934, so we know production began in 1930, but this is a somewhat later production gun. Um, this crest also tells us it's a Belgian military gun. Uh, FM-30 is the official designation, and that is Fusil Mitrailleur Tron, or Machine Rifle Model 1930, and our serial number again. Uh, it's worth pointing out there's there was some sort of big gouge that was taken out of the, the top of the receiver on this one. It was cleaned up, and the whole gun's been refinished pretty well, um, but I don't know exactly when. Next up, let's take a look at some features. So first up, on the buttstock, we have a socket here for a rear monopod. We also have a folding shoulder rest. That's a pretty common feature um, for light machine guns at the time, and actually kind of still today to some extent. FN went ahead and put a pistol grip on this, 
which is something that was done on the Polish guns as well as also on the Colt commercial guns from the 1920s. We have a dust cover here that you can easily flip up into place, flip down, and that dust cover is automatically opened if you open the bolt and when you close the bolt. So you can put the dust cover in place, uh, carry it with a loaded magazine, and uh, dust, you don't have to think about opening the dust cover before you shoot. One of the changes that FN made here from the American commercial guns is the use of this style of sort of reversed sight. On the US ones the notch is back here and the sight goes forward and it flips up this direction. The Polish Model 28 flipped up forward and that's what FN decided to use. So we have that. Um, and this is the open notch style of sight, not an aperture style. FN developed their own magazine release for the Model 30, which is probably one of its best improvements. Um, instead of having a button in the front of the trigger guard here, it's just a nice trigger-like hook that you can easily engage. The magazines for the FN30, or FM30 I suppose, are interchangeable with BAR mags with the exception of an extra notch being cut down here to fit the magazine catch that's located right there. So on the original BAR the mag catch is up here, and you can see this magazine is cut for both. Um, later on when they went to the FND they would actually develop a new magazine uh, that isn't exactly a BAR mag. If we flip back over to this side for a moment we have a three position selector M, R, and S. S is safe, R is repetition, and M is mécanique. So uh, instead of having a safe and semi position this has safe, slow, and fast. And that is approximately uh, 350 rounds per minute for slow and 600 rounds per minute for fast. Um, and frankly a good shooter on fast can fire single shots and almost anyone can pull off single shots on the slow setting if that's what they want to do. It's worth pointing out here that the disassembly method for the FN30 is the same as the US military BARs, the 1918s. Namely the receiver back here, um, you can't pull the bolt through the back because of this, the shape of the receiver back here, the stock's fixed in place, and the way you disassemble this is to pull the grip out and then you actually have to pull the bolt and bolt carrier down through the bottom of the receiver. And FN did improve this system a little bit. This is the bolt catch, or the, the bolt guide, you call it the bolt guide lever. So it's this lug on the inside that keeps the bolt tracking in place so that it can't come out. When you want to remove it you can push in on this end, lift that up, and let the bolt out the bottom of the gun. On the US guns you actually had to like get a cartridge and use the, the case head and pry a, a thing out there. In fact I can show you that right here. Uh, this is a 1918 A2 and you have to pry this up against spring pressure to get the bolt out. So FN's improvement with this release lever, that's a definite improvement, but this is still a subpar system. And FN would improve this again uh, and much better when they go to the FND model, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Moving forward once again we have a magazine well dust cover here. It snaps into place there, keeps the gun clean, that's a nice addition. And then in addition the handguard area right here is designed to attach to an anti-aircraft tripod, um, again to make the gun a little more multifaceted in its use. We have a folding bipod at the front, there's this little hook that locks it in place. If I pop that and then open the bipod up here. This is still kind of a clumsy bipod. Um, it snaps into position here and then you get a little bit of pivot of the gun, but not much, and the bipod's not adjustable in height at all. Um, it is locked in place here so you can push into the bipod for recoil control, which is helpful. Like This is a step up from not having a bipod, but yeah, it's not the greatest bipod ever. We have an adjustable gas system here um, to let you tune the gas system for the ammunition that you're using. And then FN also did a little bit of redesign of the gas system in general. So I've taken out the pin here that allows me to remove the handguard. You can lift that out and then there we 
There we go. I can take the handguard and gas tube off, and they've set this up so that I can actually remove these parts for cleaning without having to take the entire bolt carrier gas piston out of the gun. So the relevant point of improvement here for FN is that they reversed sort of the cup and the, the plug ends of the gas piston. On the US military BARs, this plug element is here, and the cup is located on this end. And there was a potential problem there, namely, as you did a lot of shooting, the cup could actually expand from heat, of course, and at the same time it was getting a lot of carbon fouling deposited into it. And what could happen over time is it would get a little bit bigger, and it would build up a lot of carbon, and then when it cooled down, the gas piston, the you know, the, the plug end, would no longer fit into the cup, because the cup had gotten bigger, carbon had solidified inside it, and now there's not enough space for this end to get in. And so you'd have to clean it out, or else the gun wouldn't go fully into battery and wouldn't cycle. By switching it, as FN has done here, now, even if this starts to expand under heat, it has to, every, every shot it's getting cleaned and press fit into the cup. And so it doesn't have an opportunity to build up carbon without it being scraped off. So this was a reliability improvement to the gun that's not trivial. And then, last but not least here, we have our barleycorn front sight, and we have a simple thread protector over the muzzle threads. Those muzzle threads are there to allow the use of a blank firing adapter for training. Um, later on, later versions of the FNBAR would include a flash hider. The Model 30 did not. Alright, it's been a while since we did a full field strip of a BIR, so let's go ahead and take the rest of this apart. We're going to take this key pin, rotate it down, pull it out. That's what's holding in the fire control assembly. Pull that out. Um, I can actually show you one of the other, the final, I think, major improvement or major element of the FN Model 30, which is its uh, rate reducing mechanism. So. So the way this works is there's actually a spring and a rack and pinion gear down inside the fire control group here. And we have what essentially looks like a disconnector. When the, the bolt hits this going forward, this whole thing pops up. And you can see the gear teeth down in there. And there's a spring wound up, so this is pushing like so. And so this is on slow mode, and what'll happen is that disconnector <coughs> pops this up, and so the bolt has to overcome the extra friction to push that down before it can go all the way forward. That slows the gun down. Now you can see here, when I move this into fast, the sear on this side lifts up, and it blocks this lug from being hit by the bolt. So the, the uh, rate reducer here stays locked in the downward position, and the gun fires at its full normal rate of fire. Um, for what it's worth, that's the magazine catch right there. That is the ejector sticking up, so that can be replaced if it needs to be. And this is your firing sear. So when I pull the trigger, this drops down, that releases the bolt to go forward. And if we're in slow mode, it's going to hit that, and the bolt will have to overcome that. Otherwise, in fast, just drops the bolt. Next up for disassembly, what we need to do is open the bolt just far enough that that pinhole lines up right there. And then I'm going to push the pin through the charging handle. Like so. There we go. That pin is going to disconnect the charging handle from the bolt and bolt carrier inside there. Now we can disconnect the bolt from the bolt carrier. We've got that lug that comes out, and then go. we have the connecting rod for the mainspring, and then I can push this lever down, I can pull the bolt back, that lever down, there we go, and pull the bolt out. Now we unscrew, well, rotate open and pull out the handguard pin. We already did this once. Lift this up, take the handguard off, 
And then I can pull the bolt carrier gas piston forward by pivoting this up. That can come far enough forward, there we go, to come completely out of the receiver. And inside here we have our firing pin. Ooh, okay. Uh, this really is pretty obnoxious to disassemble, and uh, it's actually better than the US 1918 disassembly because of that improved uh, release lever. The US would never change this system up. Uh, FN did on their next iteration after this, the FND, they would substantially improve the disassembly by uh, redesigning the back of the receiver so the buttstock just pivoted down and everything could easily come out the back end of the gun. But uh, that's the FND and this is the FN30 or FM, Fussy Mutrailleux Model 30. The first production of the Model 30 is done in 765 by 53 millimeter. that's the standard Belgian military cartridge uh, in 1930, and the Belgian army will buy them from 1930 all the way up until 1940, basically when World War II begins, when Belgium's invaded once again by Germany, uh, production ceases. In the meantime, uh, FN also offers this gun in a variety of other calibers to anybody on the international market who is interested, and they make at least two significant sales. Uh, both of them in 8mm Mauser, they sell them to Ethiopia, and they also sell them to China. However, sales would not go all that long. This wasn't going to prove to be a hugely popular gun for FN, because in 1932 they introduced the FND, or Démontable, which is the quick change barrel version of FN's BAR. And that proves to be a substantially more popular gun, and they make a whole bunch of sales of those. So by the way, if you're interested in how they did the quick change barrel and the other changes that they made at the same time, because there are a number of other significant improvements to the gun uh, that came into play with the FND, I do have a video on the FND, so I'll link to that at the end of this one. You can check that out if you're interested. But um, what that leaves us with is the FN Model 30, which is a fairly scarce gun. This is a gun that didn't see a lot of action outside of being the standard Belgian service light machine gun going into World War II. So these are particularly scarce here in the US, just not very many of them made it onto the US registry, so very cool of uh, Morphe's to give us the opportunity to take a look at it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching.